G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Wildcard. Thank you for watching the Wildcard Rugby Show. Like, comment, and subscribe, and yes, you are here today because finally, the revenge match that we've all been waiting for since the Rugby World Cup pool stage, South Africa versus Ireland, this time in Pretoria. And yeah, this will be a very, very interesting match. A number of key players are not available due to obviously retirements and injuries. And yeah, both teams will have to do with what they've got. And this will be a absolutely insane match to behold. So without further ado, let's talk about some of the key things going into this game. First up, obviously due to injury, not injuries actually, this is uh, due to the Olympics, right? Ruining rugby all around the world. The fullback for Ireland, Hugo Keenan, decides to is his decided to play for the Irish national team at the Olympics and therefore Jamie Osborne here has been given the privilege to represent his country on his debut match in the fullback position now this guy has been a pretty stellar performer for Leinster and yeah this is uh, really getting thrown into the deep end and I think he's gonna have <laughs> boy I do not envy his position for this weekend because as we all know the Springboks number one strategy is targeting the fullback with the high ball bombs and with the setup that Springboks has announced for this lineup there's going to be a lot of speed coming at this fella with Chesley Kobe in the four pack we've got Quagga Smith and yeah and with the additional kicking game that's being brought forth by Villa LaRue yeah he's gonna have a tough day this weekend and we shall see how he manages under the pressure and I think I have no doubt that Rassi Rasmus will be looking at punishing him and really try to apply pressure to his position. Now, with that being said, the referee this weekend is going to be Luke Pierce. There was a late change to the referee. It was initially going to be Ome Angus Gardner from from uh, from Australia. He has some personal issues and he wasn't able to. He has pulled out of the the, the, the referee. He will be in the TMO next week. So yeah, I think uh, you know my speculation is that. Maybe he got a little bit scared. He didn't want to get a, you know, Australian referees in South Africa has a history of getting trending worldwide, let's just say. So he's probably, I don't blame him. I mean, if I was, like I said, I've said in, in my previous videos, if I was offered to referee this match, <laughs> I would need a billion dollars, okay? Not not doing it for, for any less than a billion dollars, okay? Uh, so Luke Pierce obviously has been offered a billion dollars, stepped up to the role, and he's going to be the referee. Luke Pierce is a great referee. He's an English referee. He's very good, very concise, nothing too crazy. So I expect a pretty, pretty good performance from him this weekend. And uh, this game will be at Pretoria. I don't know why I even bother checking. It's always sunny in South Africa. And yeah, perfect conditions for rugby. Perfect, perfect weekend coming up for all of us. So yes, let's go through the lineup. Let's see what happened. Rassi Rasmus has been <laughs> making some jokes online. He said that, you know, what, what, is, what, is, what is his thoughts about Ireland without... Johnny Sexton, and he said that the referee have a better time. <laughs> Rassi, making fun, funny jokes is my job, okay? Just let me let me make the funny jokes. But hey, anyway, so it's, you know, that joke aside, I do think that the influence of Johnny Sexton is absolutely tremendous for the Irish team when he was playing. And it was actually shown against England, the Irish side, that without Johnny Sexton on the field, despite being on paper much better side than England, they lost at Twickenham in the Six Nation game. So, you know, it, it is a legitimate thing that the Irish team has to, to ponder about because what happened was Ireland, when, you were, when they were allowed to play into their rhythm against other teams, the Irish team was able to snowball that momentum, that confidence throughout the game and then just really pound the oppositions into the ground. But against England, they were not able to find that momentum. England was able to disrupt some of that flow of their game. And suddenly, they really started to look at each other like, hey guys, who's going to step up? And that is when someone like Johnny Sexton is crucial in your team to bring that confidence, to bring that stability, to bring that, you know, that leadership that's going to carry you through those games to win, uh, to win the Grand Slam. And that's where they lost the Grand Slam. So... You know, without Johnny Sexton, it is going to be a factor. And I think that is going to be crucial for Rassi Rasmus and this Springboks team is to apply pressure and make sure that the Irish team is not going to get into that rhythm 
of where they're just rolling their forwards at you and then able to crash ball, constantly getting over the advantage line, and then eventually pound over the trial line with their, you know, with their, with their, with their, with their, you know, with that forward power, maybe go wide with, you know, James slow into the corner. So yeah, really have to control that rhythm, really have to disrupt that tempo. And once that's gone, who's going to step up? That is the question, right? Is, is Frowley going to be good enough to take off that mantle, to take the leadership as a young fella? There's a lot of veterans in this team. You know, the question has to be asked, is he going to be able to command the same presence, the same leadership from the, you know, the the, the the senior players like Johnny Sexton was able to do, right? If Johnny Sexton looks at you and says, you're going to do a bit better, he's going to get a response. But if Frowley say that to somebody, he might not carry the same way. I'm not saying that anybody should disobey him. He might not carry the same way, right? That is the difference between age. That is the difference between experience. And I think that, you know, jokes aside, this is a legitimate issue that Ireland needs to look at. And this will be a, one of the biggest tests again whether or not they can carry on without Johnny Sexton. With that being said, the the team uh, with, you know, there's a little bit of adjustment for both teams, obviously, due to due to the setup, due to, you know, whatnot. Quagga Smith is at number eight for the Springboks, and it's going to be one of the key areas that it's going to be in, to, you know, to disrupt the game plan of the Irish team. And uh, yeah, the battle is going to be absolutely huge. And under, obviously, Hundry Pollard is going to be, it's in this team. The difference between the two sides at the Rugby World Cup really came down to a few goal kicking. And Pollard, it's going to come in and prove that he might have been the difference if he was on the field in that Rugby World Cup pool match and uh, would have made up the difference from his goal kicking. So yeah, anyway, let's have a look at the lineup. Let's see who's in, who's out. Coming in the forward pack, from rowers, Ox Nche, Bungin Bunabi and Franz Maherba. There's a really interesting dynamic here for the Springboks setup in this forward pack. Ox Nche and Bungi are really like about 10 centimeters shorter than Franz Mahoba. Mahoba is about 183, 185. Ox Encha is literally like 172, 175. So there's a big difference in height in the scrum. What that means is that the Irish scrum are going to be on a bit of an angle. Like it's going to be off balance a little bit on one side. And we shall see how that's going to play into the overall dynamic of the scrummage. And I do think that it's going to make it difficult for Ty Furlong on the tight head side. So Andrew Porter, Dan Sh Dan Sheehan and Ty Fallon, the, you know, the veteran front row now for the Irish team. Andrew Porter has a bit of a, you know, has a bit of a history of boring in. So maybe that changing in, in height, it's going to bait him a little bit to boring and maybe giving away a penalty. Maybe that's what the Springboks are thinking. Also Ty Furlong as well. The fact that Incho is like a lot shorter than him. Ty Furlong is also about like 185, 183. So Incho is a lot shorter than him. That's going to set him lower or so and leaving Andrew Porter a little bit higher on his side. So how that's going to play out in the dynamic after the engagement, I think, uh, I think yeah, this will be interesting to see how that's going to work out for, for for both teams. But I do think that uh, there's definitely a plan for the Springboks having Incher in the starting 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 number one jersey here. It's not just random, uh, randomly decided that he was the next one up because, you know, Kitsov is injured and he just happens to be the reserve. That's definitely not, that's definitely, I don't think that is the logic in his selection in this spot. Coming in the, in the locks position now, Eben Espes and Franco Mostert, two dis defensive giants. And for the Irish team, Joe McCarthy and Ty Byrne. Again, just both sides are, both locks, both teams locks are super strong defensively and uh, extremely good in the breakdowns as well, especially Ty Byrne. And it's going to be uh, some, someone to watch out for in that regards. Now, the battle of the loose forwards, probably the second most important battle outside of the kicking game is going to be the breakdowns, the disruptions, and then really making the tackles before the opposition is able to get over the advantage line and slowing down that um, that, that the ball speed in the rack. So Kisia Kalisi, Peter Sibtutoy, defensively extremely good. Kisia Kalisi also very good as a ball carrier. And Huaga Smith will be the key difference to make up for the Springboks, especially chasing under the high ball and getting over the breakdowns as well. Just, yeah, double duty here for... Quagga Smith, and it's really, really important for him to perform. Uh, initially, I was talking about, you know, I was wondering why Yasmin Visa is not selected. He's actually suspended in his last game in the Tigers for the Tigers for six weeks. So he's not able to play at all because of that. And Peter Romani, George Van der Fleet, and Kaelin Doris, again, really, really good ball runners, all three of them, and really, really good breakdown operators as well. And this is just a pure game of physicality. Whether or not Ireland's going to get over the advantage line, it's going to be... Yeah, that's going to be the, the, the key indicator to their, their success in this match. 
coming in the in the back line now. Fav de Klerk coming number nine. Craig Casey, number nine for the for the for the Irish team. Fav de Klerk, I thought last week, you know, with a young or a Jaden Hendricks' brother at uh, was the Jordan Hendricks at ten after Fav de Klerk. I was interested to see if Fav de Klerk was going to be a, the playmaker in that in that match last week, but he wasn't. So I'm not really expecting any you know anything out of the ordinary out of Fav de Klerk. That doesn't seem to be a, a transition in terms of strategy out of the night area so i'll be expecting some standard stuff out of fab craig as well pretty standard stuff <clears throat> uh jameson gibson parks i think is injured so again huge loss there at number nine and uh, once again leadership who's going to be the guy that steps up and takes the the the, the, the leadership role for the team coming number 10 hundred pollard jack crowley we're going to talk about them hundred pollard since he returned for the spring box has been you know he was basically the guy that won the world cup for the spring box at the rugby world cup uh really not much else to say it's just hands down his kicking game, his goal kicking, his defense, absolutely tremendous all around. Uh, Crowley has, again, another stellar season for Leinster. But the question, uh, sorry, not Leinster, for Munster. The question remains that, yeah, the big boost to fill for Johnny Sexton. <clears throat> uh, in terms of skill and, you know, ability-wise, he's probably better than Johnny Sexton in terms of, like, goal kicking. And he's, you know, he's obviously a lot younger and faster. But, yeah, I think the main difference will be the leadership, whether or not he's able to lift his team when everybody's looking a little bit in disarray coming number 11 Cody Adams uh, James Lowe James Lowe has been extremely impressive in my opinion for Leinster uh better than his you know better than what I've seen for for for, for, for his performance in the Six Nations just able to score tries with almost relative ease really physical really good footwork uh, improved much improved footwork from 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 when he was playing at the Six Nations at least Come in at centers, Damien Dillender, Jesse Crew, heavily defensive focus again from Rassi Rasmus, his, you know, go-to duo now. And uh, they're going to be against, again, these are the brutalizers for the Irish team. Bundy Aki, he's really looking for that short ball and trying to punch through a defensive, you know, the defensive line. So he's probably going to be looking at potentially testing Hundred Pollard in his tackling uh, with, those, with maybe a short ball from Crowley uh, around the 10 channel. We'll have to see how Pollard's going to handle that. Uh, Robbie Henshaw as, as well, really, really good overall, fast, good ball at the breakdowns, and, uh, and uh, yeah, just overall, really, really well placed for the number 13 jersey. Cheslin Kobe coming number 14, high ball pressure, number 14, Calvin Nash for Ireland, and finally, number 15, Jamie Osborne, we already talked about him, he's going to be under so much pressure, pressure from um, for Cheslin Kobe and Quagga Smith, uh, it's, it's, and, and, and Cody Allen, sir, and he's going to be, yeah, really going to have a Big, big debut this weekend. And finally, the the, the the guy that's going to be probably more of a playmaker than Hodri Pollard for the Springboks is going to be Vili LaRue. Uh, Vili LaRue, has, his performance for the Bulls has been absolutely outstanding. And I have never seen him play this good. I mean, Vili has been extremely good for the Springboks at the Rugby World Cup. In fact, leading the Rugby World Cup, he was on the rise in, in terms of his skill level and his performance for the Bulls. Another step up from that. So I'm very keen to see how he's going to perform for the Springboks. Some of the new skill sets, some of the new kicking game that is brought into the ball from the Bulls. Whether or not Rassi Rasmus, Rassi Rasmus is going to deploy that for the Springboks, we have to see. So the difference, uh, the, 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 so the, the kicking game for this weekend I'm expecting is that Fafta Clerks, obviously the box kicks, will be targeting the, 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 the halfway to the 10 meter line in the opposition 10 meter line. And then 100 Pollard will be Probably focusing on more bit of a cross kick and you know a, a, a kicking around the the, the uh, kicking around try to land kicks around the the, the twenty two meter mark in in the in the Irish side and Vili Larue will be someone who try to put the ball deeper into the goal area and try to park the ball either just outside the goal line or just inside the goal line and forcing for a goal line dropout or even a scrum five meter scrum that'll be the kicking the three levels of kicking game that the Springboks are going to be bringing. And uh, yeah, and I, the, the main thing with the way that Billy LaRue kicks, if you put the ball deep into your goal line, you need to have someone with a big boot to exit. And yeah, and if you don't have someone with a big boot, then you're just getting camped inside your 22. Like you go like drop out, you only get it, you can only kick it out to about the halfway point and the spring box just run at you. They're back right in front of your 22 meter mark. And yeah, it's going to be a very difficult exit if they don't have somebody with a big boot for a drop out. So that'll be a, a strategy I think the Springboks will be pressuring there. In the back, in the reserves now, Malcolm Marks returning. This will be his second game. I think, yeah, second game for the Springboks <clears throat> after his injury. 
This is the guy I've been really wanting to see. Gerhard Stenekamp. Stenekamp. He's uh, really good for the Bulls. And um, he was, you know, like when, when he played Leinster in the semifinal, I thought it was incredible. I thought it was incredible. Absolutely dominant in the scrummaging. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised to see him here. And yeah, and, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's one guy that I've been looking forward to see playing for the Springboks. Vincent Cock coming number 18. As always, the vet, as always the veteran. For the for the Irish, Ronan Keller, uh, again, very good line operator, coming to number 16. Keen Healy, veteran, you know, veteran of the, all the veterans, still kicking in at number 18. And Finlay Bellum will be off the bench at number 18. I don't know how much time they're going to give uh, Healy, because nowadays Ireland tend to only give him maybe 10, 20 minutes. So that could be a difference maker for the for the for the spring box to try to explore that scrummage in there a little bit also uh there'll be some law change with scrum scrums as well how that's going to turn out we shall see this weekend a team is just going to be like you know deliberately giving away short on penalties to avoid giving away you know a penalty try in front of the goal line we'll have to see if that's going to happen but yeah you know be prepared for that uh for the remainder of the back line, I actually think that the Irish have a slight advantage here with their experience. So my Morat coming in at number 19, Ahi Snayman number 20, James Ryan, you know, he was captain for Ireland at one point. Uh, someone that I'm, yeah, yeah, again, someone I was expecting maybe at a starting team, just to show how important they, they are. Andy Farrow has, you know, Andy Farrow has emphasis for the, you know, for the bench in that regard. Ryan Baird coming number 20, Another veteran off the bench, Connor Murray at 21. Marco Van Staden will be coming off for the Springboks as the additional forward. And finally, for the two final reserves, Grant Williams, sorry, Grant Williams will be coming in at number 22. Really, really fast uh, halfback. Really interesting to see. You know, want to see, I want to see more of this guy play a different style. He's almost like a, you know, a younger version of. Kobus Reinach, the way he plays. So very, very fast, very, very agile. And uh, yeah, I want to see more of this guy. And number 23, finally, Sacha Fangberg Ngome Zulu. Very impressive last week, kicking a 50 plus goal and looking like, yeah, looking like he was made for the spring box, really. And, you know, I, I wonder if he's going to come off a of Pollard or he's going to come on at a fullback for Vili LaRue. Maybe a Vili LaRue. I think most likely a Vili LaRue. But, um, you know, if, if you know, I, I think that there will be a point where they're going to put him in at 10 to, you know, to replace Henry Pollard if he's, you know, he's definitely going to live up to some big, big shoes there. Uh, finally, for Ireland, Kieran Frowley, who's being, you know, who will be coming on at 10 and the big gun, big man returning, Gary Ringrose coming in number 23. Again, shows the emphasis for the, for the, for the Irish team is in that center, you know, testing that center de defense and really trying to jam the pressure down in the middle of the field so yeah that's the setup guys let me know your thoughts let me know your predictions i think the spring box will win this one i think that if the spring box kicking game especially with villa larue it's going to really keep the irish team to make it make it difficult for the irish team to exit their own game and i think that the irish team will um yeah will really struggle to exit the the the, the, the team but the irish team if they're allowed to play to the momentum an upset is possible so yeah and i think that the springbox has the tools to disrupt that so i think that springbox has a slight edge over this game i will give it 18 points to 15 to the springbox yeah let me know your thoughts guys let me know your predictions and i think that i've talked about this before my prediction is that if springbox win this game they're gonna put sasha next week at the number 10 jersey we shall find out anyway thanks for watching guys like comment subscribe let me know your thoughts and uh Appreciate you watching. Cheers.